Hello, welcome back to Lessons Learned. I'm Sherry, this is Blue, and this is Monday Quilt Chat. So I'm just going to chit chat about everything quilty in my own quilty world and in the quilting world in general. And I hope you enjoy my jibber jabber of today. I had a nice uh, weekend, I guess you could call it weekend, the last half of the week anyway. On our camping trip, we went to a park called Spring Mill, which is about 45 minutes from our home. And they had some very nice camping spots and just backed our RV in there and just had a good time. When we got there on Wednesday, there was only one other camper in the entire section that we were in. And we thought, are we crazy for camping? Because it was cold the first day and a half or so. It was pretty out, but it was cold. So we thought, hmm, this is going to be nice. It's just kind of secluded. And then that trailer left, and that left us by ourselves. But by Thursday afternoon, they started rolling in. <laughs> so the campground pretty much filled up. Uh, we left on Saturday midday to afternoon, and uh, it was it was pretty full. So we weren't the only ones having our last hurrah uh, camping this year. So I guess we'll be sadly winterizing our camper and waiting till next year. I'm not sure if we're going to do something in February or not. Um, it's just kind of up in the air. I don't know if we're going to go away for a month during February like we normally do or what. So that's that. And I did get a few things done last week. Even though I couldn't show you on Finish It Friday, I did get my uh, uh, Autumn Wonders block done. And I also worked on the Harvest Square Dance project. This one. I got of the bigger blocks there I got one more set of those in another color to do and then I'll be going on to the smaller actually I have already moved on to the smaller stars in that one in that I have made buku half square triangles so those smaller stars that are in there consist of that and those will all be the same kind of that gray uh, shadowy look of the quilt and they kind of fade in behind the bigger design I show you again these ones here so the ones in between are the ones that are the half square triangles now you can't get up there did you hear him get a little mad? He's cantankerous sometimes. He's just a little old man. <laughs> He's nine years old now, so uh, he has a lot of energy still, but he's he's got the, the old man mentality some days. <laughs> so such is life as a as a dog mom. And then I hope you enjoyed the Thursday or the Wednesday video on that Southwest themed quilt uh, for four yards of fabric in three hours. It was actually less than three hours. So it's a fun, fun quilt to make. Hold on. And then also I worked on the um, horse panel quilt, the commission job for the little girl's bed. Uh, I finished that and I will put a picture it's not the best picture but it's of the quilt top I had to go on and get it packaged up and ready to send to Mary to long arm it but I'll put a picture right here for a second so you can see that that's just it hanging on my design board not the best picture but you get the idea it did get done <laughs> so i'll show you a better picture of that of, of when i get it back i'll probably be uh, getting that quilt to them rather quickly but i'll try to take some pictures of it for you before i send it off with the finished uh, quilting and the backing on it i'm using a uh, gray and white polka dot 
uh, minky for the back and I just think it's going to be a really really cute quilt for her so that's off my plate I'm happy about that I'll just have to bind it when I when it comes back um what else oh um I found an article in the latest American Quilter magazine uh it's the magazine is by and large um Christmas projects but I did find a um article in here that I thought would be very helpful to share with you and it's by Terry Lucas who is um the owner of Terrific Creations and she's I don't know if you are familiar with her I did take a class with her uh on thread art and um free motion quilting uh, actually it was um it was kind of a AQS class that you could get on and watch and you know and you have it forever so uh, I did watch it when she had that out um, along with some other ones but anyway she has this article in the magazine this this month and it's uh, fundamentals of free motion quilting is what she teaches and she does needle and thread pairing, thread weight, machine and personal tension, and the essentials of practice. And she wanted to share some tips and techniques in this article before she starts sewing. So even if you don't do a free motion quilting or thread art uh, types of activities with your machine, she has some really good tips to get started, very practical things that you can use to make your sewing day go better and I appreciated those and some of these I do do but uh, I want to share them with you because I'm sure all of us kind of fail at times <laughs> with that so his first thing she says believe it or not is tidy up the house or at least the kitchen and I do try to do that I do try to make sure things are tidy and the kitchen is clean so that does kind of ease your mind and, and make you a little less um, guilty feeling <laughs> for taking time out of cleaning the house and uh, sewing or quilting instead so if you can get that under your belt for the day the day goes better it just does and then her next one also was kind of a su surprise to me, she, get dressed. <laughs> she says at least a change into clean jammies. <laughs> uh, she says a denim skirt and a t-shirt or a ball gown and tiara. <laughs> so whatever getting dressed means to you, she has a, quite the sense of humor, um, will help you to, to feel like you're getting down to business to start to sew. So that's, that's true. Now I have to actually go outside my house and come to another building to, to sew. So I'm pretty much always dressed. Well, yes, I'm always dressed to come out here. Uh, I don't come out here in my pajamas. But uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes it does help you to you put a clean set of clothing on and brush your teeth and wash your face and comb your hair and and, and like she said, get down to business. So she said, take seven minutes for dinner prep. So <clears throat> I've found this very helpful. And the crock, pot, the crock pot is your friend, or at least take your meat out of the refrigerator. Now, Mark and I have been practicing the carnivore diet for the last few months, and we eat a lot of meat. We eat beef, bacon, butter, eggs, and a few other meats, occasional fish, and you know, we have a lot of meat in the freezer, but if you don't get it out of the freezer, it doesn't turn out quite as well when you go to cook it. So <laughs> I try to do that first thing in the morning, either get something in the crock pot where it'll defrost itself like a roast, or get those steaks out of the freezer and let them thaw out so that when it's time to eat, I can just run in and do that real quick, have dinner and come right back if I want to. 
So she said, scrambling to prepare something when there are hungry people who might seriously consider chomping your right arm is smart. <laughs> She said also take some uh, some sort of hydration into your sewing room and snacks so that you don't have to, um, you know, go back into the rest of the house to, to find that. And then she also says to get up and stretch when it's time to have your snack. She says have a good chair. A good chair is essential. And she told the story of um, having a chair with arms, like a, an office chair, just really doesn't work for her particular body style. And I would think, yes, the, the arms would get in the way. They would bump into your desk and they would, you know, you would be turning and they would you know, be bumping into them. So I just use a regular office task chair without arms that swivels and um, you know they have those aero chairs that are made for to use with sewing machines and i use those at the retreats that i went to and they're nice they're they're comfortable chairs but i don't really feel any noticeable difference with those and they're about four hundred dollars so you know if you can go to office depot or staples and get one for 50 or 60 dollars and it's just as comfortable i would recommend that <clears throat> uh, stand up when you can to do certain tasks and she says to use uh, now she, this is specific to free motion quilting she says enlist quilting aids and she's talking about all the different things you can use to get grip on your hands now there's gloves specifically for free motion quilting or you can use the tips of dishwashing gloves uh, you can use rug grips, gardening gloves, and then also uh, she mentioned that using these things, if you're using rulers and tip templates, you don't have to press down so hard and that takes some of the stress off of your shoulders and your neck. And then she also said to use a timer to just set it for 20 to 60 minutes and be sure and get up and dance after that <laughs> if you're into getting up and dancing or moving around in some way you can just do stretches so she also said uh, be sure and keep uh, a journal handy which you know we made our journals here a while back uh, with our composition notebooks and that's certainly a good fun uh, journal you can use to put your ideas in and she mentioned how that a lot of times when you're sewing along ideas pop into your head and you know if you just keep going on with the task at hand you might forget it so stop and take a moment and write those uh, wonderful ideas down and it also gives you um, a break for your eyes and your hands for a moment so also she says to play music now that's that's very uh, individual isn't it I don't tend to play music uh, I like music in the car but for uh, sewing and quilting I don't listen to music that much I'll occasionally listen to a youtuber who talks a lot and is not really showing you things uh, there's plenty out there and not just in the sewing genre but uh, on other subjects that you like to listen to uh, I like to listen to that sometimes I listen to an audiobook but not very often um, I just really kind of like the quiet so if music is your thing and it motivates you and you know helps you to be more productive then you should have it on uh, she says something really interesting about iron. She says she keeps two, no, she keeps a wide format pressing station with two irons and then all of her spritzes and sprays that she likes to use. But she says she uses a full size iron for the big stuff and a small iron for uh, piecing uh, and pressing the seams. So um, I thought that was interesting that she had both types of irons out, but maybe that is a, a key to better productivity. 
And then she also says at the end that when the creativity runs dry, just let it go, let it go. Sometimes you just need to walk away and shut the door and leave it alone for a while until it comes back to you and not try to force yourself to to be creative when it's just not there. So I thought those were, were very good um, suggestions for us as uh, sewists and quilters and crafters. And uh, in a humorous sort of way, she outlined what she recommended and I just wanted to share that with you. So take some of those things to heart and see if there's anything in your quilting routine that you can improve upon to make you uh, even more productive and more motivated, more creative. So let's see, I wanted to share with you a couple of things that I got in this week in the mail. Uh, I think I brought every, I don't, not as huge of, it's a huge haul, but it's only two things really, well, three. So uh, Anne of Green Gables, a Riley Blake, bundle that I got from Quilt in a Day on, on Super on Sale. I got that 40, 40 or 60% off. It wasn't much by comparison to the regular price. And then I also got some wonderful yardage to go with it. This will be borders or something. So I'm going to do something in that. I haven't chosen my pattern yet. I've been looking. And then from Soya, I got the Tilda Hibernation Bundle that just came out fairly recently. This is 34 pieces, I think. And it's got critters on it, but you know how Tilda is. You, sometimes you have to really look to, to see what these are. But you can see that one's a mouse. And then some of them are just kind of coordinates of one pattern. And then let me see if I can find you another critter. Here's a bird. Here's a bird one. Pretty with mushrooms. The colors are gorgeous in here. And oh, this one's cute. It's a squirrel. So the theme is hibernation. So these animals are kind of in sleep mode. Although I don't think mice hibernate. I don't even think squirrels hibernate, do they? Let's see what else is there. Well, I have those in a bunch of different colors, it looks like, is what's going on. So a mouse, a squirrel, and a bird. So very pretty. I'll have to look up a pattern on hibernation and see what's suggested. And um, as I've mentioned before, if you go to the maker of the fabric to their free pattern section on their website, you can find um, you can find patterns, free patterns that go with these prints uh, or these fabric lines. And um, for example, this one, Riley Blake, if you go to Riley Blake's Free Patterns, there's two patterns out there, fairly simple patterns actually, for this line. I have not looked up Tilda to see if she has any free patterns. Um, Tilda Quilt Collection, tildasworld.com. I'll have to go on there and see if there's at least some suggestions on on what would be good for that. And then also, I got that from Soya. And then I also got a um, mystery pack of R Fill Thread. And what they were doing is you could buy three for a certain price. I think it was $34 or something like that. And they just randomly picked them for you. So they gave me a coral. Well, it's more like an orange. And this green and this blue so I haven't checked to see if I already have those but it's always nice to add to your thread collection mine is in my stack of drawers back here I have two drawers dedicated to thread and there's um, 
a few pegs left <laughs> to fill up but it's nice to have a good variety around so now let's go ahead and get into my week um, today I'm going to be planning the video for Wednesday I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but it will start coming together here in a minute, I'm hoping. <laughs> no, I, I have a couple of ideas in my head. I just have to decide what I want to do, but I'll try to make it a stash busting type of activity for you. And then uh, I need to package up and send the horse panel quilt to Mary. I'm going to do that today and get that in the mail. I have the Autumn Wonders Block Wednesday of Pat Sloan's on Wednesday. And then I hope to spend some more time on this this week and maybe get to where I'm closer to the putting together aspect of that. And then I also need to do the Barn Star Sampler. So I'm going to put that down so that I don't forget. So we're in uh, November now. And so it's time to get those blocks done. And I think that's all I have pressing in on me other than happy days. So we'll see what happens with that this week, if anything. I did get started on my Connecticut Star. And... I had uh, some adventures with it. Now, here's my one-fourth of the star finished. So, it looked like that. Here's the actual page. I picked it last week with you. So, this is it. And I was able to match up the colors pretty good. And I even had this fabric right here. It was almost exactly what they have. And what happened to me was is I went inside soon after I made last week's video and was going to copy the pattern onto the paper. And I pulled out this, this page just like I did with you. And I went inside to copy it. Well, that's not Connecticut. That's Colorado. Well, guess what? I copied Colorado. And I came out here. And I had all these fabrics out and ready to go based on the picture. And I tried every way in the world to get Colorado to look like Connecticut. And it just wasn't happening. <laughs> I did a fantastic job paper piecing. But it didn't look like anything because the layout didn't go together with, with this. So, lesson learned, pay attention <laughs> when you copy your pages. You're, it's not the page that's on behind the actual star, because that's too easy. It's the one next door to it. So, anyway, I spent quite a bit of time on that first quarter of a block, but I was determined to go ahead and get at least this much of it done. So, as the mood hits me this week, I'm going to do some of this and maybe get another section or two done of that because I'll be wanting to pick another star here pretty soon. So I hope uh, the rest of you are FPPing along with me if that's appropriate to say <laughs> and uh, I know some of you are. I see you on the Facebook page. By the way if you're new here and you don't uh, know it I have a uh, Facebook page. It's called Lessons Learned, and it's open to the public, so you can go out there and join that group without jumping through any hoops, and the link is in the description box. So that's all I'm going to put down for right now. Just making a couple more notes here. Okay, here is the uh, quilt of the week and I will put that right here so you can watch that while I'm talking. It's called Oh My Gosh 70 by 88 by Rebecca Tucker of Christiana, Tennessee. Christiana, Tennessee. It says hand piecing all the one and a half inch squares of reproduction fabrics 
into nine patch and four patch blocks was a great project for Rebecca when traveling. The Sue Garman pattern kept her busy for about three years. After the small patches were sewn together, Rebecca set the blocks together on her Bernina. She did her own quilting in a stippling pattern on her long arm. Oh my gosh was displayed at a mountain quilt fest at Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. So, wow, one and a half inch squares of fabric is how she made that quilt. And you don't really appreciate it. You just can't from a photo. But if you go to Paducah sometime or one of the AQS uh, quilt shows that they have around the United States, um, getting up close and personal with those quilts, with those teeny tiny uh, pieces is, it's, it's out of this world. It really is. You just sit and think, oh my goodness. I guess that's why it's called, oh my gosh. <laughs> you think, oh my goodness, how long could that have possibly taken? And I always have in my mind, they just made this in the last few months. But as we can see here, no, she worked on it for three years. So, you know, maybe some of these people that are using these teeny, teeny, weeny blocks in their show quilts, they're spending a lot more than from one year to the next on it. Maybe they're spending three years or more. So it's uh, very pretty with the reproduction fabrics, very uh, vintagey looking. It's gorgeous. I would love to see that up close. So I guess that's all I have for you this week. I am going to get busy and get things going here. So if you're not ready yet, get something out for, for dinner tonight, <laughs> put on some clean pajamas <laughs> or some clothes and grab a snack and go sew. And I hope you get a lot of sewing done this week. And if not, if you, if you can't do a lot of sewing this week, then do some sewing this week because it's good for you. And we will see you back here on Wednesday for that mystery video, whatever it may be. And then we'll see you back here on Finish It Friday for a deluxe edition because we didn't have one last week. All right, have a great week and we'll see you soon. Bye.